for an archipelago like the Philippines, traveling by boat and ship is one of the most popular modes of transport in the country. The roll-on, roll-off or roro that started widely during President Arroyo's watch connects key islands and provinces in more than 400 ports in the country. It is said to be the most popular water transport to date. But in 2013, we have been warned by an independent maritime review website, Maritime Insights, that while a Roro vessel is one of the most sought-after cargo ships to work on, providing both cargo and passengers carrying capabilities and reaching ports more frequently, it is also dangerous. The latest of these mishaps happened just last week when the MV Maharlika Dos sank off the Surigao Leyte Channel, leaving eight dead. Marina or the Maritime Industry Authority eyed human error for the cause of the sea mishap. This accident renewed calls to improve the country's maritime safety standard. House Bill No. 2860, for instance, is filed to see creation of an independent body called the National Maritime Transportation Safety Board. While our country and the world are focused in improving aviation systems, we should not forget to check the seaworthiness of ships and vessels carrying thousands of passengers daily. Welcome to Opposing Views, a hard, straightforward discussion of today's most pressing issues. The unfortunate sea accident of MV Moharlika 2 is just one of many maritime mishaps. It's time to check the irony that while we send the best seafarers to the world, we're struggling to make our own shipping lanes safe. So our debate question for tonight, is our maritime transport system still safe? Good evening, I'm Rod Depomoceno, and this is Opposing Views. All right, joining us tonight in our discussion is Attorney Nick Conti, Administrative Director of the Maritime Industry Authority or Marina. Good evening, uh, Attorney Nick. Good evening, Rod. Good evening to all the televiewers. Uh, yeah. Thank can you, you give for us your... having me here. Yeah, th thanks. Uh, thanks for joining us despite the rains. Uh, uh, can you give us your quick thoughts, uh, Attorney Nick, uh, on, on this uh, debate question? All I can say is that uh, at the outset, the, uh, the uh, maritime uh, industry is still uh, safe and uh, we can still depend on our seagoing vessels for the transport of passengers and cargo. And uh, the reasons for maritime accidents are many and complex and for sure we'll be discussing that uh, tonight. And even in this age of uh, uh, precision uh, era of uh, satellite-based uh, technologies and even with advanced communication equipments, um, there are still accidents happening. The one in Korea, the grounding of uh, that U.S. vessel in, uh, in uh, Tubataha Reef. So uh, there are so many reasons why there are maritime accidents. But uh, as I've mentioned, it's still safe to navigate in Filipino waters. All right. Thank you so, so much, Tony Nick, for joining us. On the opposing side is engineer Nelson Ramirez, uh, president of the United Filipino Seafarers. Uh, engineer Ramirez, good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, again, th uh, despite the inclement weather, you were able to join us, sir. Uh, thank you, Rod, for inviting me on this occasion. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I would like to say, you know, for at, at the outset, that uh, it is not safe anymore to sail on board uh, domestic uh, vessels, because again, now we have here, you no, know, uh, finger pointing is again uh, the name of the game. Every time we have the maritime disaster, but I would like our audience, our televiewers, to know that a ship is not designed to sink. A ship, no matter how. Uh, it will be battered by waves, it, can, it will upright on its own. No matter if it, it will incline 15, 20, 30 degrees, it will still upright on its own if it doesn't lose its stability. All right. Okay, so let's uh, begin our discussion. And we'll start off, obviously, uh, over the past couple of days. We, we, we heard about the news uh, regarding the MV Moharlika, the unfortunate sinking of uh, MV Moharlika, where eight souls uh, perished. Um, Early this week, though. your initial thoughts, uh, uh, Attorney Nick, on this on this uh, tragic accident. Uh, what I did is that I uh, I uh, inquired from the regional director uh, in that area mm -hmm. uh, of the maritime industry what happened. He initially gave me uh, the following causes: the strong waves, and the gusty winds, and the swelling of the sea, 
there was also an, an indication that, that there is a listing of a cargo on board. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, it could have been uh, the result of uh, what you mentioned earlier, human error. So, but uh, without preempting the result of the investigation. So it's still ongoing. Yeah. Still ongoing, as I mentioned earlier. Mm. The reason for a maritime accident is too many and complex. It could be natural causes, like the condition in the sea. It could be a technical failures, technical factors, just like the maintenance of the vessel, ship-related uh, causes. It could be human error. It could be cargo-related errors, like the li listing of the cargo, as earlier reported. So uh, investigation still ongoing. Um, we would like to, of course, assure the public at the outset that uh, we'll be able to finish the uh, investigation together with the Philippine Coast Guard and, uh, and uh, we'll be making the result available to the mm -hmm. public. And the format of the investigation is to ensure that this accident will not happen again in the future. Of course, we know that the Philippines hold the record of several maritime accidents. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are aware that uh, as an island archipelago, it is always a challenge for the Philippine government to ensure compliance with stricter maritime safety standards. We always depend on the vessels, on the ship, in order to bridge all our economic activities as an island archipelago. So it is really primordial mm -hmm. that we promote the safety of navigation. All right. right. Uh, Engineer Nelson, uh, your thoughts on, on this uh Thinking of MV Maharika, do you think it's an isolated case or do you think this is a, a symptom of uh, the state? Uh, Actually, it is not an isolated case. It happens so many cases. And uh, even the sinking, the sinking of MV Our Lady of Mount Carmel, it's the same thing. Mm. As what I mentioned a while ago, a ship will not sink if it is stable, if it doesn't lose its stability. But like Princess of the Orient, mm -hmm. one writer said that it is mind boggling as to why Princess of the Orient sunk amidst Typhoon Signal Number no. 1 when there were so many small fishing boats of 250 gross tonnage that were able to withstand the, 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 the battering of the waves and even successfully rescued the uh, survivors of MB Princess of the Orient. Mm. So that is a, that is a case, uh, a classic example of a, of a ship, although uh, that, that the Princess of the Orient was the biggest ship afloat or sailing in the domestic waters during the time, but it sunk amidst um, uh, Typhoon Signal number right. one. Mm. Now, right. right, okay, so now the, what, we've been hearing, um, um, Attorney Nick, on a human error. Uh, at, at least those are the initial reports that, that, are, that are coming out no, regarding this uh, sinking of MV Maharika. Now, since obviously humans or people man the ships, uh, should people be afraid now to, to, to ride uh, our ships and, and sea vessels? I mean, if it's, if it's always human error, even if you say human error, I mean, most of the time that's what we hear, uh, sh shouldn't there be some kind of apprehension uh, on the part of the, the public? Yeah, I would like to disabuse the minds of the public that uh, our vessels are not safe because of uh, the competency of the crew on board. I just would like to state for the record that the Filipino seafarers are the preferred seafarers, not only, of course, in the Philippines, but all over the world. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, we are the number one seafaring nation. We are actually supplying more than uh, uh, one-fourth or 25 percent of the requirement seabirds, of yeah. the uh, uh, international seaborne trade. So that only displays, uh, that only shows the, the capability and as well as the competence of the mm -hmm. Filipino seafarers to man the ships. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned earlier, the sinking of vessels in the Philippines, even if we'll trace it from Doña Paz, mm -hmm. from uh, the vessels mentioned by Ingenier Ramirez, even the small vessels or the Banca, mm -hmm. uh, Gretchen, even the big vessels of Sulpicio in 2008, mm -hmm. it, will, it will be uh, shown that it is actually a result of several factors. Mm -hmm. And that's why the maritime industry authorities there, in order to ensure that there will be no gaps in policies, appropriate regulations will be issued. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, in the case of overloading of Doña Paz, mm. there were only around 1,500 manifested passengers. According to the report, they recovered uh, more than 4,000 uh, 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 cases of cases. missing bodies. So um, what, what I'm saying is that uh, we have to look at the, uh, the historical account why there has been disaster in the Philippines. Mm. We're not saying that that's purely the, the result of the owners of the vessel because the owners... 
has the primary responsibility yeah. to ensure the safety of the vessel. We have to remember that. Dapat tandaan po natin na yung kaligtasan or the safety of the passenger is the primary responsibility of the owners of the vessel. And that's also the shared responsibility of the ship captain or the, or the master on board, which is the overriding authority in so far as the so in operation that sense, of the vessel. It's purely a marina issue. Yes. Hmm. I, we'll, comparing it, we'll be comparing it with the airline company. We don't get to blame the airline regulator whenever there's a an airline crash, immediately you will look at the, how the, the airline was maintained by the owner. Mm -hmm. We will look at how the safety management system was implemented. The same is true in the Philippines. We have to look on how a particular operator is behaving in terms of maintenance, in terms of uh, hiring of the competent crew, mm -hmm. in terms of equipping the vessel with life-saving appliances, all mm -hmm. these equipments. So we have to consider Yes, we have, we have to consider because the default has always been, if there is a sinking, you blame government. Yeah. But Take note, it is always the primary responsibility of the ship owner right. and the people uh, acting in behalf of the right. At this point, uh, Engineer Nick, uh, I'll allow you to, uh, to uh, respond to that. Uh, however, we need to take a short break. Uh, we'll be right back. Meanwhile, you can react online via Facebook at facebook.com slash solar, op oh, sorry, opposing views on 9TV or tweet your comments at opposing underscore views. Use the hashtag OV Maritime Safety. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views. I'm Rod Nepomuceno. We have with us Attorney Nick Quanti and Engineer Nelson Ramirez. And our debate question for tonight, is our maritime transport system still safe? And just before the break, uh, Attorney Nick was making a point uh, regarding human error. No? Because it, it always seems to be the case no? where, where human error seems to be the usual reason why uh, sinks, uh, the ships sink. So, um, and then you pointed out, uh, Attorney Nick, that uh, it's usually many factors. It's not just that. Not just just that no? uh, obviously, this will have uh, more relevance, uh, Engineer uh, Nelson, no? because uh, obviously you're, you're, you represent a, uh, a federation or a, a union yes. of seafarers. What, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you think that uh, human error is uh, a major factor and therefore people should be afraid to ride ships? No, uh, I, I beg to disagree with the statement of Attorney Conte because, uh, as I said a while ago, a ship is not designed to sink. But then, I challenge the head of the maritime safety of Marina, who is a civil engineer, to conduct an inspection right now in all the vessels plying Cebu and Mindanao. I, I am pretty sure that 90% of these vessels are unseaworthy because right after the sinking of the MV Princess of the Stars, the marina inspectors conducted a survey or conducted an, an inspection of all the salt fish lines vessel in Cebu. And we found out that there is no single, uh, single, single, single ship of salt fish lines which are seaworthy. So many, there were so many deficiencies and there were so many also major deficiencies. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, one of the major deficiencies is that the vessel of surface lines cannot, of the cargo, the, the cargoes of the vessels of surface lines cannot be secured because there were no pad eyes to connect the turn. So, so you're saying it's not, it's not about the seafarers, the, the seafarers it are trained? It is the uh, unseaworthiness of our vessel. Now, Attorney Neconte, during the first three months of his administration, he suspended 187 vessels. In three months' time, he suspended 187 vessels. Why? Of unworthy because it unworthy was unseaworthy. Mm -hmm. It was unseaworthy. But what is happening now? They do not suspend anymore. Even right after the sinking of MB Our Lady of Mount Carmel, there was the suspension. So this is, there is one thing. There must be fleet mm -hmm. suspension so that the, 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 the marine inspectors can inspect the seaworthiness of the vessel, because the unseaworthiness of the vessel is a culture of the ship owners here. Are there in the any, your, your thoughts let, on that? Let, let me respond, Rod. First, I would like to take exception to that sweeping conclusion, or should I say observation of Engineer Ramirez, that 90% of the vessels, uh, according to implying Cebu or somewhere in Mindanao, are not seaworthy or unseaworthy. But I would like to... Let me explain why. Right. The, the job ahead, of the marina so that our audience will be able to understand the function 
of the regulatory agency of the Maritime Industry Authority is to conduct inspection on a periodic basis. So we have established a system of inspection to ensure that they are compliant, not only with the national regulations, but with the ISM code. And what is the ISM code? This is the International Convention on the Safe Operation of, sea of Ships, as well as the uh, protection of uh, marine environment from all pollution. Mm -hmm. So this has been translated into a circular of marina in order to promote the culture of safety among the operators. Mm -hmm. So every time inspection is done, they have to check, uh, check everything. They have a long checklist. So if they comply with the checklist and after thorough inspection and audit, they will be given the safety certificate. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have to do it every day. That's conducted on a periodic basis. Mm -hmm. So after a year, you will again be inspected. Mm -hmm. The uh, agency in charge of the day-to-day -day inspection of the vessel in the, in the ports is the Philippine Coast Guard, which mm -hmm. is working hand-in-hand -hand with Marina. So the in daily, order. It's the daily, yeah, it's just like the LTFRB and the LTO. The LTFRB provide the franchise. The flying squad are the guys on the road checking the, the roadworthiness of the cars or the LTO. Yeah, so the, those checking the seaworthiness of the vessels are our partners in, mm -hmm. also under the DOTC, which is the Philippine Coast Guard. So they have been issued safety certificates. They've been issued safe manning certificates. Meaning to say they have complied with established rules and regulations. So what, what did Nelson uh, come up with yeah, that number but, uh, of 90%? But, but I would say those certificates are just on paper. Are just on paper. You see, we conducted a docu documentary with the other uh, mm. station, the TV mm. station, on the seaworthiness of the vessel. We were there in, uh, in, uh, in Batangas. Mm. And what we did, we saw very glaring. Right there and then, we saw that the cargoes were not properly lashed, that the fire hydrant ca cannot be opened, that the, 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 the the, the, the container, the holder for the fire extinguisher, there was no uh, fire extinguisher. And then we found out that they have a, 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 an obsolete uh, la, la, life uh, raft, mm -hmm. or, which are already damaged. But, so, the, uh, but, but the, Coast Guards were, the Coast Guard personnel were there. So did you, do, did you document the fact that 90% of the, 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 the ships I would still give, make the challenge. No. Uh, I would still give the challenge mm. that if we inspect the vessels in Visayas and Mindanao, flying Visayas and Mindanao, those vessels, 90% okay. of the vessels will be... I will shift gears, uh, yeah. be, uh, I will shift gears naman. Thing. Seafarers naman. The seafarers naman, uh, sir. Because no? yeah, it's always, almost always, it's human error. No? It's almost always human error that, of course, we'll, we'll get to the point of yeah. the overloading, mm, supposedly, okay. and all that. So, but but a, lot of, uh, a lot of news reports are, are coming out that it was human error. And obviously, when it's human error, this, it, the, the, the focus is on the seafarers. So would you say that we have trained seafarers? Would you say that our seafarers, you did mention earlier that we have the best in the world, but do you think that they're sufficiently trained? Actually, Rod, during the time when I was sailing, I have only the, the, the seaman's book with me. Mm -hmm. But now... Uh, our seafarers have, have a bag full of these training certificates. So many trainings that they have in order for them mm. to sail, in order for them to be, uh, to be employed, uh, to, to be employed on board. But the thing is, it is the culture of the ship owner to maintain the ship, to mm. maintain the ship. Right. The, 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 the seaworthiness is next to their agenda. The main objective is the profit. All right, so let's, let's go about, uh, because we can discuss that human error and obviously the, the seaworthiness or, or unworthiness of the, of the, of the ships. No? But let's talk about the, the allegations or at least the reports that, that, that have said that uh, there's been overloading of passengers. We, all, we hear this all the time. Even in Doña Paz, 1987, uh, supposedly the ship can only take 1,500 plus, uh, but uh, those who perish were around 4,000. No? So... That's what we're also hearing, the overloading of passengers. So aren't we learning from, from previous disasters uh, here at Tony Nick? Yeah, we, we, we learned so much from our experience. And uh, we don't have much cases of overloading of, uh, no. of passengers nowadays. Uh, especially so because we, there is a we, mandatory pre-departure inspection. So it's not, it's not happening? It's not happening now. So even in the sinking of the Mahar Likados, if you will count the number of passengers as against the size of the vessel and how many passengers it can accommodate, there was no case of uh, overloading or overcrowding. Mm -hmm. Now, so is that under that's the, the thing of the past already. Marina uh, we no. have the circular. It's a Marina Circular 180, wherein we require all merchant vessels to... Uh, document all their passengers and put them in the passenger manifest. Mm. So before the vessel can actually depart from the port, the captain has to make that declaration as to how many passengers are there and they have to submit that, that manifest. Mm. That is so, our so requirement. You, yes. you, you, you see, 
uh, you see how many passengers were there in the manifest. Well, how many passengers that the, the missile carry? You, you, you can see already that there is something There is some there's discrepancy. All right, there we need is, to take a... Uh, is need to catch it. <laughs> Sorry. So if we are going to check that vessel, if that vessel is seaworthy, definitely I would say it is not seaworthy mm -hmm. because as, as, as I said, a vessel is not designed to sink. to sink. But there was no typhoon mm -hmm. in that area, only a gale warning. Okay. So why would that vessel sink? Engineer Nelson, uh, we take thought of that, uh, but in the meantime, we need to take a short break. Uh, more maritime safety issues when we return. You're watching Opposing Views. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views. I'm Rod Nepomuceno. Still with us is Attorney Nick Conti. And on the opposing side is Engineer Nelson Ramirez. And our question, is our maritime transport system still safe? Now, I'll uh, address this question to Attorney Nick. Uh, how would you assess Marina's performance? Again, as we discussed earlier, almost always, if there's a, a, a ship mishap, it's always the Marina that's, uh, that, uh, that's in the headlines. Uh, how would you assess it? And, um, yeah, just just, to, give, just to give a brief overview, Marina was established in the year 1974. Mm -hmm. We're actually uh, celebrating its uh, 40th year of uh, establishment. Uh, primarily to integrate the promotion, development, and regulation of the shipping industry. It was originally placed under the office of the President, then transferred to Minister of Transport. In the year 1980, we assumed the function of issuing franchises because the BOT then, the Board of Transportation, has been abolished. So those relating to maritime franchises when, uh, was approved by Marina. And further consolidation of the function was done in 1987 with the issuance of Executive Order Number 125 and 125A as amended reorganizing the Department of Transportation and Communications. All I can say is that in these 40 years of existence, Marina has been faithful to its mandate. Mm -hmm. While uh, Engineer Ramirez has been mentioning that there are still maritime disasters, there, there are uh, accidents uh, happening left and right, all I can say is that in terms of the, how do you measure the effectiveness of a regulatory agency like Marina? We have issued the appropriate regulations so that we'll be able to comply, one, with international uh, uh, conventions as uh, required by the International Maritime Organization, of which the Philippines is a member state. We are also enforcing our regulation, not only based on the Public Service Act, but also based on established rules and uh, procedures and uh, rules and regulations of that. The International Safety Management System, the National Safety Management System, the Ship Safety Inspection Regime, and we have established several regulations to prevent uh, overloading, overcrowding, to ensure that everybody on board are manifested. Of late, we also established the rules that all cargo should be properly uh, stowed and lashed, lashed yeah. and we are requiring ship owners to have a cargo security manual because history has shown that most of the cases of maritime accidents in the Philippines are the result of the movement of cargoes on board while they're actually navigating. So, pag tinamaan ng malakas na alon, mahuhulog yung kargamento, hindi na makakabalik yung barko. While sinabi ni Sir Nelson kanina, uh, vessels are not designed to sink. But even during the, uh, panahon ng gera, during the time of uh, war, World War II, ang daming barkong lumubog. Not because of cannons or bullets, but because of weather, but because of maybe they navigated in shallow waters because of human error. So, these are all the factors. But so Marina has been there for 40 years mm -hmm. in order to ensure that regulations as promoted by the International Maritime Organization, are also duplicated or but, but, implemented in the Philippines also through the Philippine Merchant Marine Rules but are you and Regulations. Not, uh, responsible for implementing all those regulations? Apart from issuing the laws, are you not also supposed to implement them, make sure that the, the, uh, car, the ship owners are, are following? That, that's correct. The, the uh, International Safety uh, Management Code or the ISM Code is supposed to ensure the promotion of the culture of safety on the level of the operators. And to ensure that there is a safe working environment, they have to ensure that they have competent people ashore and on board managing all these vessels. If they will not be able to comply with all these regulations, then as a regulator, we have to impose the appropriate yeah, sanctions and penalties. This is what I'm saying. It is a combined 
a responsibility of the ship owners or the operators or their agents on board. The people they hire to man their ships, it is also the responsibility of what we call class societies. This is a term which I have to explain also already, if I may. Yes. The, the certification of whether or not the vessel is seaworthy has been a delegated function also to an entity called classification society. Mm -hmm. So in the international setting, you have recognized organizations like uh, American uh, Bureau, of Shipping. Bureau of Shipping, you have uh, Bureau Veritas. These are the experts looking at the integrity of the vessels, uh, ensuring that starting from the construction, uh, placement of the equipment of board, they're following with all mm -hmm. the required safety standards. Mm -hmm. Please note that shipping is an international industry regulated by international conventions. Unlike any other industry, ito yung negosyo na dapat mag-comply ka sa reglamento na kapareho ng lahat ng bansa sa buong mundo. So, as a member state of the IMO, we are doing that and we are the flag state administration to ensure that our regulations are aligned with that of the regulations of the world which is being implemented okay. by the IMO. Now, we'll get back to this agreement because right. it's nice to hear that. Mm -hmm. It's nice to hear that, but I would say mm. Marina now is in a mess. Why? Because the first mandate of Marina is to promote the economic viability of the shipping industry, which is shipbuilding, shipbreaking, trans uh, transshipment of cargoes, and expansion of its fleet registry. But what is Marina doing now? It is doing the maritime safety. It is uh, doing the uh, giving certification to the seafarers. Meaning, Marina is doing is majoring in minor and mi minoring mm -hmm. in major, <laughs> minoring in major. Okay, They're not you, doing supposed that? to be uh, or, or, or what is supposed to be on their mandate. Could you imagine the maritime safety? Even the Philippine Coast Guard had has a four, uh, four more than four thousand personnel. They are having a problem on the maritime safety alone. How much more for Marina that's only four hundred uh, personnel? And now they took over the the, the certificate of uh, proficiency, which was before issued by the um, maritime training uh, council. Mm. And aside from that, before they they also took mm. over the issue once of the. Uh, uh, of the seafarers identification and record book from the Philippine Coast Guard. The Philippine sure, Coast Guard has so you're, many personnel. You're, you're saying they've taken now, so much responsibility. Now they are even, they would like even to take the, the licensure mm. examination from the Professional Re Re Regulation Commission. Now, I would say Marina has swallowed more than it can chew. All right. You, you, you vomit, you vomit what you have swallowed. Some, I did get some comments from, yeah. uh, from, from Facebook. Uh, I have a, a friend, in fact, who un unfortunately, um, he, he suffered loss, no? a family loss. And he was wondering, he asked a question, does Marina have the capability to oversee its regional offices? Because, uh, for example, in, in the case that they had, where uh, two of his relatives, two very close to him, uh, uh, unfortunately, perished in a banka in a banka accident, and um, and uh, he, according to him, for example, that banka was impounded, but later on was taken again by the same company and then put under another new company. I, I guess I'm just making this an example. Can uh, as pointed as the, pointed the, out by engineer Nick, can you oversee all of that, uh, all of that uh, function as mentioned by engineer? Okay, the the yes. marina is composed of eleven regional offices and. Uh, their, their policies being implemented on the ground are very much aligned or attuned with that of the central office. So we are following the same regulations. Mm -hmm. We are following the same uh, maritime protocols. So in that particular case, when in the, the banka involved in that, uh, in that uh, tragic accident, I'm sorry to, yeah. to hear that, uh, was reportedly... In, well, it's supposed to be impounded. And then in, taken, impounded. Taken back by the Taken by the back company. by the owner. It was sold. Um, we have to look for reasons why, I mean, is there a pending case wherein there is a necessity for it to be, mm -hmm. to be, uh, uh, to have that banca in custody of law mm -hmm. or, so, but to respond to your question, yes, the, re the regional offices are very much uh, aligned and are tuned with, with that and, of and the and central office. And according to engineer uh, Nelson, uh, have, have you bitten more than you can chew? The uh, recent recognition by Congress that there should be a central maritime administration that deals with the compliance with the IMO, the International Maritime Organization Convention on STCW, or the Seafarers Training and Certification Watchkeeping, which was previously being administered by the Department of Labor and Employment and has been transferred to Marina, is 
very relevant because we're the only country in the world wherein the regulation of seafarers is not within the maritime sector. So we have to do that. But to the question of uh, Nelson, that can you, can you perform that function? Yes, because it is, it, it is a daily challenge for Marina to be able to equip itself also with competent personnel. We are hiring additional people. You, you cannot just say just because we cannot uh, perform the function now because we're new. We're suffering birth pains also. Mm. Then you have to understand, but from the looks of it, you will see that we will be able to hurdle these challenges. We'll be able to Take encourage people. more people yes. to join the government despite the meager salary. And uh, all because we are dedicated to promote the Philippines as a maritime power, all because we are dedicated to ensure that the seafarers, our Filipino seafarers, will still become All right, at this point, I need one. to uh, cut you short. Uh, we will be right back. Uh, Engineer Nelson, I'll allow you to do a rejoinder, but please don't go away when we come back. The results of our online poll on the issue and the final words of our guests. Stay tuned, you're watching Opposing Views. Welcome back. This is Opposing Views. I'm Rod Depomoceno. Still with us is Attorney Nick Conti and Engineer Nelson Ramirez. And the question for tonight is, our maritime transport system still safe? Right before uh, we took a break, uh, Engineer Nelson, uh, you were going to make a point regarding this uh, concern uh, that you feel that the marina is being overstretched with so many responsibilities on its plate. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Yes, uh, because Marine has took over so many functions. Functions from the Maritime, uh, from the Philippine Coast Guard, functions from the Maritime Training Council, which is very huge. And then now there are, uh, fun, uh, fun, the, 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 there are two functions of the Philippine Coast Guard that they took. Uh, first is the issuance of the Seafarers Identification and Record Book, and also the Maritime Safety. And now they are going also to take over the function of the Professional Regulation Commission, which is the licensure examination. And aside from that, they are putting the wrong people. Could you imagine the, uh, the appointed uh, head of the Maritime Safety Unit of Marina mm. is a civil engineer. What is a civil engineer doing in a maritime safety? Mm. Will he be constructing buildings, mm. roads, or, uh, or, or bridges? Mm. Oh, this is the wrong thing that Marina is doing. No, no, so you, you feel that they're putting the wrong people there? They are putting or, the wrong people there. Or, mm. Why will you put a, uh, a, mm. a, a civil engineer to a mari as the head of the Maritime right. Safety Unit when we have so many seafarers who are more qualified to do the job. Attorney Nick, yeah, I'll allow you a, a yeah, quick just, just a quick uh, response. We, we, we have always been following what the Civil Service Commission mm -hmm. has uh, imposed in terms of qualification requirements. So these people have complied with all the minimum qualification requirements. Mm -hmm. Of course, we would like to appeal to the public also that those who would like to be part of Marina, mm -hmm. Uh, considering it's, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier, the meager salary, we, we welcome all of you because this is really more of a, of a, uh, a mission to really join government, knowing that the, the grass is greener on, on the other side. Mm -hmm. It really requires technical competency, but more than that, it requires commitment, it requires commitment, passion hard, to be able to work, deliver, yes. to deliver the, right. the, the mandate. But uh, let me assure you that the people in Marina are dedicated, they're passionate, they would like to make a difference under the, okay. the administration of uh, Dr. Max Mejia. We are all in one team in ensuring that we'll be able to okay. deliver the because mandate of if Marina. if the head of the Maritime Safety Unit is dedicated to his work, then that one, that thinking now of the Maharlika Tukudat have happened. So again, I would challenge the head of the Maritime Safety Unit of Marina to conduct an inspection, a safety inspection right now mm. on all the vessels flying uh, Visayas and Mindanao. Mm. And I, right. would, uh, I would assume, uh, I, I, will bet, I will bet my last centavo on that. The, the uh, administrator has already dispatched not only the auditors or the inspectors of Marina from the maritime safety, ongoing now. This is but ongoing. also the guys from the enforcement yeah. uh, section mm. or uh, unit to be able to okay. uh, conduct the all necessary right. inspection. All right. Now, Here's another question, no? uh, this, uh, just in. In case of another sea mishap, uh, God forbid, no? are we ready uh, for this kind of emergency situation, uh, Tony Nick? Yeah, I must say yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, during the time of Secretary Maroas, when he was still the uh, Transport Secretary, which was continued by uh, Sec Junabaya, they've been uh, giving funds not only to Marina, but also the Philippine Coast Guard to equip them 
uh, so that they'll be able to respond to contingencies and emergencies like like what happened in Maharlika mm. Dos. So mm. more rubber boats are being purchased, more people are being trained uh, in so far as uh, conducting search and rescue operations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are strictly implementing the regulations on cargo lashing, ensuring that the vessels not seaworthy will not mm -hmm. sail. There are vessels that have been detained or stopped by the Philippine Coast Guard from sailing because of mm -hmm. some deficiencies found during the inspection. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we would like to commend all the other sectors of the Philippine Navy for also mm -hmm. helping us during times of disaster, as well as the stakeholders themselves, mm -hmm. just like in the Maharlika Dos. Those who responded are actually the private ship owners mm -hmm. that provided additional support so that we'll be able mm -hmm. to save more passengers floating in the waters. Uh, so, Engineer Nick, do you think we're going to be ready for uh, a similar situation? Oh, yes, the Philippine Coast Guard is uh, supposed to be tasked for that, no? Mm -hmm. And uh, we have search and rescue vessels, and uh, the, the, the Coast Guard also is trained about yeah. that. But what I am worried is the state of the seaworthiness of our vessel, because when we conducted a, a, a documentary, you see, I, we made this, uh, a, a, as a banner okay. story, disaster, is waiting what to is, happen. What is that? For the for our televiewers, what is that uh, documentary? Uh, yeah. the, uh, this is uh, my newspaper. Uh, uh, your newspaper? Our, our newspaper, okay. Tinig ng Marino. Okay. The banner story here uh, in the July-August 2013 issue is a was a disaster waiting to happen. And look what we have here. Uh, we have here uh, the fire hydrant that cannot be opened. We have here a car that uh, was uh, that was that um, latched, last uh, or secured. Yeah. The tracks were not also secured. We have here an obsolete uh, life wrap. We have here a, 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 a rotten mooring line. We have here a hmm. holder of the fire extinguisher in which there was no fire extinguisher. All right. So there so are a lot of. So you're saying there are a lot of violations. The, that was really the state. Okay. If you are going to conduct an inspection right now, you will find the same thing. Mm. Turn, Nick, we're running out of time, but uh, your quick thoughts on the comments of uh, Engineer Nick. Yeah, I, uh, I would like to, to uh, get a copy of that uh, report uh, from mm. Nelson, which he personally viewed during that inspection. That happened maybe a year ago. Mm. And uh, I will ask or task, put to task our auditors and uh, inspectors to see to it that uh, these things have already been uh, addressed and mm. these deficiencies were accordingly uh, 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 modified by, uh, mm. by the ship owners. Now, as a regulator, if they have not complied with what is required of them to promote the sea seaworthiness of their vessel, then they should be met at the appropriate sanction. All right. Uh, okay, we've reached uh, the, the final portion of, of our show, uh, so we only have enough time for your, your parting words. Now. So I'll start with you, uh, Attorney Nick, uh, your, your final words to our televiewers who are probably jittery. Uh, about uh, uh, boarding any ship right now. Yeah, again, just to disabuse the minds of our uh, televiewers, still safe to travel uh, using our uh, vessels and sea, still safe to navigate in the Philippine waters. The marina is doing its best to be able to uh, comply with what is required, not only of the international uh, convention or standards for safety, but also our own national legislations. And uh, it's good that this uh, debate, if I may mm. say, is happening at a time when most parts of the countries are submerged in water. We have stranded passengers in various ports, primarily because we are no longer allowing ships to sail mm. whenever there is a typhoon signal from the point of origin along the way and point of mm. the destination. So it, this only shows that in so far as Marina is concerned, the Marina management uh, under Administrator Max Mejia, safety of passengers is non-negotiable. So, so far, at least for this day with, with Typhoon Mario, there's been no uh, reported mishap? Wala pa naman po. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank, thank, God. thank God. And uh, all I can say is that the promotion of the safety of life at sea, the protection of the marine environment, ensuring that the ships and the cargo are, uh, are safe, is actually the uh, concern of everybody, not only of Marina, not only of the ship owners, but it's actually the concerted uh, effort. effort that so. will actually promote the ultimate, what we call, culture of safety okay. for our vessels. Very late, Conti, thank you so much thank uh, you, for, for that. And uh, Engineer Nelson, yeah. your final if words. If we are going to promote a culture of safety, I would give, uh, I'd like to give some solutions of the problem that we have now. Number one is conduct an honest to goodness inclining experiment and check, check if the hydrostatic table of the vessel will match with the inclining experiment result. Second, Conduct an honest to goodness inspection on how the cargos are secured. Third, conduct a safety inspection on deck 
and engine, lifeboat, emergency fire pumps, fire extinguishers, and other safety equipment. Fourth, conduct an honest to goodness emergency readiness evaluation, machinery readiness evaluation, right. because right. when Dr. Mejia uh, was appointed uh, as uh, the head of the marina, he visited the office of the Philippine Coast Guard, and I told him to do that. When are you going to conduct an right. honest to goodness emergency readiness evaluation? and machinery readiness evaluation. Now, require the master, all right, this one is very important, require the master of the vessel to, to have a printout report on the stability mm. condition and damage the stability of the vessel before sailing. No printout the stability condition and damage the stability, no clearance to sail. All right. And then, okay. implement strictly the fleet suspension. If one of the vessels is involved in a disaster, Conduct immediately an inspection. No clearance until Engineer all Nelson, the I have to yeah. cut you off. All the I have to cut you off. You can't read the entire thing. Maybe we can share it with yeah, the Yeah, maybe you can give it to me. Okay. Yeah. But I assure yeah. you, that's part of the but checklist that Marina is doing right now. All right. Uh, thank one you one very thing. much, Attorney. Yes. Well, one thing is very important. Replace the head of the Maritime Safety Unit with a qualified qualified uh, head uh, for, for the maritime safety. He must be a safe error. Now with a real safe error or a marine or an engine officer who really and, understands. And I'm sure Attorney Nick has taken note of that. Safety. I'm sorry, I have to cut you off, uh, yeah. Engineer. Uh, that's one. I have to cut you off. Thank you so much to our guest for tonight, Attorney Nick Conti, Administrative Director of the Maritime Industry Authority or uh, Marina. And of course, the ever-entertaining engineer Nelson Ramirez, President of the United Filipino Seafarers. Now let's see the viewer's opinion through our online poll. Is our maritime transport system still safe? Those who answered yes, 30%. Those who answered no, 70%. And that's our opposing views for tonight. Uh, tune in again next week for another bold and engaging discussion here on uh, our show, on our relevant issues. I'm Radio Pupuseno. Good night and God bless.